The success of your talk has absolutely nothing to do with the information you are trying to convey, i.e. your topic. If I'm doing a topic on laboratory rats, the content about rats is not the important stuff. The information itself won't actually lend itself to the success or failure of your talk. This is what I think all presentations really are about. They're about storytelling. This is a quote from Andrew Stanton. If you don't know the name, he's the guy behind a lot of the Pixar movies, you know, Toy Story, etc. He said, never give the audience four, always give them two by two. Let them take in the information, let them build to a conclusion, build to some resolution and some climax that they feel some ownership of. And, and this is something that, that I feel very, very strongly about because the ability of telling stories is actually what helps make a presentation successful. And it's not just about success from the speaker's point of view, feeling good about themselves, although that's obviously something we like to do. It's actually about what you can give to the audience. Storytelling improves the ability to learn. And there's a million research papers out there. We just, just Google for storytelling and learning. And you'll find that the ability to tell stories actually goes back through the ages in terms of that is how information is best conveyed to people via the act of storytelling. It also improves memory. If you've ever seen those TV shows, documentaries about people who, for example, memorize decks of cards, what they do is they actually don't just go, oh, that's the Ace of Spades, that's the Queen of Diamonds, etc. They actually produce a narrative around sets of cards. So for example, this set of three you can see on the screen, Ace of Clubs, King of Diamonds, Queen of Spades. I might come up with a story, and this is my personal story of something like this. I dig, that being a spade, I dig being the queen when listening to punk music. My favorite punk music band is a band called King Diamond, King of Diamonds. I'm number one when I'm in the club, hence the Ace of Clubs. And these kind of techniques are what people use when they're trying to improve memory. They come up with stories around how to actually memorize things. So as a presenter, if you can tell a story, you're doing half the work for that of the audience. You're providing them the story, the narrative, and that improves their memory. So what constitutes a story? How do we build a story around obviously what most of our content is, which is typically technical, sometimes what we can think of fairly dry technical stuff. I like to think of stories as the kind of things we tell around the campfire. In Australia, we have a very, very old indigenous community, the Aboriginals, but indigenous communities around the world generally talk about how they passed information from generation to generation via the act of stories around community events, such as campfires. But stories have a beginning. They have a, the development. Something happens within them once we've set the tone and set the characters. And that often means conflict or some sort of predicament. And typically there's a protagonist. And then we come to some sort of resolution. That's what your classic sort of story elements are. Let me give you a trivial example, the hare and the tortoise, the race. The beginning is there's a hare and a tortoise. They be, decided to race. The hare was so cocky, he ran ahead, got so far ahead, he fell asleep. The tortoise passed him and won. And we all know that story. The storytelling satisfies those three elements, an introduction, the development of something, some protagonists, and then a resolution. And even though it's never said in the story, because the story is told in a way that engrabs the audience, we, it leaves a lasting impact. It's never said in the story, but we get that impact. So, you know, if you're the tortoise, you can be persistent. You never have to give up. Or if you're the hare, don't be cocky because it might come back and bite you in the end. They're the lessons that we take away as an audience, even though they're never referred to in the story. And that's to be our aim when we're doing a talk, a tech talk even, that we build a story and leave a lasting impact on something to do that the audience can take away. At this point, you might be having a bit of cynicism going, that's all well for stories, but we're techies. Yeah, how do we turn tech content into stories? And my point is this, any topic can be storytelling. Let me give you a real example. This is the message I wanted to give convey recently in a talk that I gave. This is a new command that came out in some version of the database. You can cancel a SQL statement. That's, that's the thing. That's the information I want to convey. But if I come out and just go, hey, look, there's this new command called alter system cancel SQL. It doesn't leave a lasting impact. Yes, it looks you know, like some syntax, but what, what does it give to me? I need to build a story around it. So for me, the story was this. What is the motivation for this particular facility? My story was this. As techies, if we've ever been on an on-call roster, all we want to do is get a good night's sleep.
But no, it never happens. You always get some ridiculous text on your phone and saying at two in the morning, drags you out of bed saying there's an idiot in the database. And you crawl out of bed and you log on and the system is going absolutely haywire. But thankfully, now there's a facility in which we can actually cancel that bad activity. We can run this new command and then phew, we can get back to sleep. Take it back to the campfire. We had a, an introduction. We ha, we're DBAs. We look after things. We had a development of the story. We had an adversary. Bad sequel is the adversary and the DBA, you know, he has to battle. He has to drag himself out of bed, log on and do something. But the DBA ended up being the victor because we had this new command. And therefore, we leave the audience with an impact that a DBAs, they have a new weapon in their arsenal, this new facility, and they have a reward. They have something they're going to take away saying, this is going to be my way to get a good night's sleep. Anything that can be talked about in terms of a topic, you should be able to mold a story around. Not just a fictional story like this, this is generally a real one, but most motivation for tech is some sort of story around it anyway. So you should be able to convey that story. Stories often have a hero. For example, in that tortoise and our hare, it was the tortoise. He was our hero. We were introduced to him. He encountered some sort of adversity and then he had some sort of success. Your stories want to have that kind of hero element as well. Now, in all the stories you tell as a public speaker, the question is, who is the hero? Who is going to be the hero? And the hero is always, it's the audience. This is what you want to always keep in your mindset when you're building stories, that somehow the audience is the people that leave as the hero. My story about the DBA and canceling the sequel, we're hoping that when I do this talk, there are DBAs in the audience and they're going away feeling, yeah, that's really going to help me. We want the audience to be the hero in all the stories that we build. This is your fundamental mindset, that whenever you give a talk, you want your audience to emerge as the victor. So when you're trying to build your stories around tech, try come up with a way that a story will be, leave the audience walking out going, not just they learn something, but something has changed about the way they're going to do their job. Because the tech they learn really is just a symptom of the fact that they've come out feeling victorious. That's what we want to do. Rest assured, that's really hard. Because one of the reasons that we all do public speaking is often we feel good about ourselves when we actually complete the talk, especially if we do it well. And so it's very easy to get drawn into the trap of doing a talk such that as the speaker, you come out feeling, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I've really impressed them. It's really hard to keep focusing your mindset that you want the audience to emerge victorious. If you can do that, then you're gonna have a really good talk. Thank you.